So, you know, if my coach gives me something, do I question the coach or do I take it? Just simple questions like that. Do I take everything my, from my mom? You have to question your mom. You have to question your mom. Should I dope? What do I feel about dope? Am I ethical? Just simple questions like that. And from that you can generate um, the culture in Trinidad or in Jamaica. We might use bushes or we might use extract. Do you know or do you understand that extract might be a supplement? I don't think many persons understood that. I didn't until I read it on the FDA website. I don't know, Dr. Radock, if you were looking specifically for programs that can be introduced or areas of focus. Or teaching. Or teaching. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Because um, Dr. Irving alluded to quite a few things. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, and the steroid passport. Because we have such a high incident of um, kidney disease in the Caribbean, we need to look at our um, pattern, our filtration pattern. We need to look at our um, hair. Do we store more chemicals after shampoo? So in terms of the amount, the concentration, it will be more in person with African, of African heritage in the Caribbean as opposed to Caucasian. We need all of that and we'll be guided. So if water says per chance it's 20 milligram, it might be 40 in somebody of African descent. And you see that now they are looking at the testosterone pre-testosterone profile, and they see that it's different in black, and they can't use that. It's different in Chinese. But unless we give data from the Caribbean, we won't be able to guide them on exactly what are the standards. Uh, thank you very much. Um, going back to the question of uh, corticosteroids, we all know that they boost performance, and yet, we allow people who have asthma to use them. Um, is it ethical to allow asthmatic people to use them? Uh, the question of ski runners from the Scandinavian countries uh, competing with uh, uh, ski runners from Central and Eastern Europe. There is always a fight between them. Uh, about 33% of ski runners from the Scandinavian countries always say they have asthma and they take the corticosteroids yeah, and uh, perform. And of course, the other ski runners are complaining. So should we stop people who have asthma from competing, which is unfair? And if we allow them to use asthma to boost their performance, it is also unfair. So. Well, <laughs> what can you say about that? And the second question is uh, related to caffeine. We all know that caffeine is a strong drug. And yet, uh, the International Olympic Committee does not buy, uh, ban the use of, uh, I mean, it has removed it from its own list. So I just want to know the arguments since uh, most studies show that caffeine is an ergogenic and it really increases performance. Your Caffeine, sorry, sells more in the US and, and Europe. <laughs> and Coke, and Coke too. Your first question about the, about the, the treatment of asthmatics. In, 19, in 1976, before the Montreal Olympics, was when the TUE, the therapeutic use exemption, started and mainly started to allow asthmatics to compete on an equal playing field. What WADA has done now, and if you read the recent code, they have now worked out levels of salbutamols and drugs like that. 
clenbuterol is totally off because that's an old asthmatic drug that is no longer used by asthmatics. So clenbuterol is totally out. That's used as an anabolic agent rather than a stimulant, a, B, a, B2, a beta-2 stimulant. What is, what is the, what is, what, what it has done now, they can tell you from the levels in your urine and levels in your blood whether this is a therapeutic use or it is not. And they give the athlete a fair chance to defend that. I, we, we cannot ban asthmatics and we cannot take out asthmatics. <laughs> but if you remember also in, in, in that 76 Olympics, also a lot of people came saying that they had people in shooting and archery that they had hypertension and they were taking propanolol. <laughs> so there will always be this. So therefore you now have to set standards and you have to, to test concentrations and see what is therapeutic, what is really therapeutic use and what is not. metabolized <clears throat> and that is where the defense comes in and the medical <laughs> the medical research and and your medical history will have to bear you out in cases like that and um, to go back to dr. Redox um, position because I can understand where um, the whole idea of the, the, the conference you want something out of it um, definitely research and study has to be focused on where we differ as a people, as a region, where, um, because there's a, there's a pattern that's been designed, an international pattern that may not fit all. It certainly cannot be a one size fit all. And we as a region, we have identified some uniqueness in ourselves, and that is where the research, I think, can focus. Where do we differ? and where we will deviate and run into the risk of having high levels of one thing or the other. So we have to do research to see if really our eating of yams, for example, <laughs> really fuels us to the sub-10 performances. So can we get someone from CFNI to start looking at the nutritional... Excuse me? on the band list <laughs> right and caffeine definitely we have coca-cola funding almost everything how can we have caffeine on the band list so you need to understand i think we had the economics of of the sport discussed here earlier this um so it is interdisciplinary and we have to bear all of that in mind to always take that into consideration into what informs what decision what appears one place or is banned here or is allowed there? You know, who pays the piper calls the tune. So we always have to understand the great sport myth. It isn't all a level playing field, and there are things that fuel the investment in sport, um, the turning a blind eye to certain things, and we're gonna let it run for one group or one area, but we're gonna penalize another or come down hard in another area. So we always have to remember those things and we definitely always have to focus. I think the research has to be what makes us unique, what makes us perform differently. So definitely in terms of research, I would want to think that is where the science can start to focus on. Why is it that Kenyans are, are so suitable? And I know that, that there's a lot of study there. Why is that that they're so suited to long distance running? Although I've seen one in Javelin now, believe it or not. <laughs> so, and, and then why are we so explosive over the short distances? Um, is there any theory to the, the whole thing about the follicles, the hair follicles? Because I think that's a very interesting debate. Because I always, when we were, um, we would go to anywhere, you know, we always wonder, should the girls run with braids in their hair? And, and aerodynamics, are they, are they losing time when they have so many braids trailing behind them? Or do they need to tie it up? Do they need to go short? That's the kind of research. Uh, you know, are we at a disadvantage for certain things or are we at an advantage? And if you're looking in terms for research, you can start with some of those basics. Okay, it's time now. I would like to thank my panelists, and I'd like to thank you as the audience.
present, for the questions generated, for the discussions that came out of it, and uh, have a good night. <laughs>